Hi and welcome back to the second part of making this really cool faux taxidermy needle felted rabbit head. So I'm not going to waste any time chatting to you now. We're going to get straight back into the tutorial and crack on with part two. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so to create the eyes, I've got some brown wool bats here and we're going to create two needle felted balls. We want them to be relatively large because we want them to fill the eye socket that we've just made. So I've got these two strips here that I've just torn off. I'm just going to grab my tape measure. So these are measuring uh, 13 inches by an inch. So I'm going to move that one out the way. And then I don't know if you've seen my tutorial on creating a needle felted ball, but it's a really good one to go to if you've not created a ball before. So I'm just going to roll this, keeping this part straight until I've got a decent size. I'm going to go a bit larger, I think. There, I think I'm going to take it there and I can always add some more in if I need to. I'm just going to use my medium needles to anchor this into position. And then I'm just felting down those corners to create more of a rounded look. Spinning it and then using my fingers in that claw position again. And then I'm going to roll it between my hands. The tighter you roll it, the less felting you're going to need to do. So just bear that in mind when you're making these balls. Try and get them nice and tight and then you'll save yourself a fair bit of time in the long run. So I'm not going to go crazily felting it. I don't want it to be like rock solid, but I want it to just be firm enough that it's not going to unravel. Okay, I'm happy with that. So it's got a bit of squidge to it, but that's fine because we're going to felt further things into this later. I'm just going to check it in my rabbit's face. Perfect. That fits perfectly in there. Okay, so I'm going to make a second ball and I'll see you again in a second. Right, so I've made my two brown balls and I'm going to place them into the eye sockets that we've made for our rabbit. Then the next thing to do is we're going to felt them down. So I'm going to hold it down with my, my index finger here and I'm just going to felt around again the edge. And I just find that by felting around the edge, it's just a really good way of locking things into position. Just spin it around a second to make sure they're looking right, yep. Yeah. And I'm just using my fine twisted needles to do this. And I'm using my fine twisted needles because they're fine enough to be able to penetrate the solid ball of wool that we've created. Whereas if you were using your medium needles, there'd be a lot more resistance there. So that's why I'm going with the fine needles for this part. And then I'm just going to do the same on this side. Right, so we've got our eyes into position now, as you can see here, but they're not looking overly natural at the moment. They look just kind of like a couple of balls that have been shoved in his face. So what we want to do now is, again, integrate these into the rest of the face and just make it look lovely and natural and obviously give it that cute look. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my brown merino. So I'm just going to tear off a portion. Nothing too major. And I'm just going to place that over the eye that we have in position. I'm going to take my fine twisted needles and I'm going to felt that over the brown eye that I've just added into the rabbit's head. I'm just going to spin it round so I can see better. And by doing this, we can create more shape to our eye as well. So you don't just have this kind of round blob it looks a lot more natural. Okay, so there we go. So you can see that this is starting to look a little bit more like part of the head. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some further shapes. So I'm going to take some more brown merino wool bats. I'm going to tear it over so we've got a small amount that's going to cover our eye. And what I want to do is, um, to create this cute eye, I'm going to have a portion of this brown merino, I'm going to felt downwards at an angle, and then I'm going to felt the other portion on this inner upper angle upwards a little bit to create a kind of a teardrop eye. So if I spin it around, 
and I can show you what I mean. So start off by just felting down the middle of the eye. And then once we've got it felted down on the central portion, what I like to do is just use some of this wool and just felt it past the socket that we've added and just create a bit more shape by felting it upwards in this kind of inner upper corner and then felt underneath and then felt downwards on the lower outer corner. I'll just spin it round so I can see better and then I can show you what I've done. And use your fine needles for this again because you're doing more delicate work here and we don't want to use our medium needles and then have it looking all kind of rough and ready. So you're kind of aiming for this kind of look now. Okay, so you've got this outer portion, this outer lower portion going on an angle and then this upper portion going up on an inward angle. Okay, so I'm going to continue to felt this down, creating more shape. Really making sure that there's no looseness with that brown merino that we've added on top. And using my needles side by side to get a nice clean angle. And once you've got the shape that you're looking for, what you can do then is you can start to move some of the white wool and push it upwards to create this nice neat edge like this. So I'm pushing that white wool up against the brown wool and then vice versa, you can also push the brown wool outwards to create more shaping if you want to felt this top bit down here it's all loose but you really do need to get this nice and firmly felted into position because what you don't want is this to become loose and unravel it's really important the eyes are the windows to the soul and we want to make sure that whatever happens the eyes look spot on so I'm just going to turn this around and I'll come back to you once I've finished felting this eye into place Okay, so we've done the first eye and all I've done is I've used my needles just to shape that brown, felt it really down into place and then either manipulate some of the white by pushing it inwards to create more shaping for the brown or pushing the brown outwards just to give more spread of the brown and give a bit more, bit more of a kind of an angle and a shape to it. So I'm going to now do the second eye in exactly the same way and I'll see you in a minute once I've completed both of the eyes. Right, so I've finished adding both the eyes and I've tried to get them both as symmetrical as possible as you can see here. Now the second eye may take a little bit longer for you because you basically want to get it as close as possible to the first eye that you've already made. But just take your time and remember it's all about adding a little bit of wool at a time. So don't add loads and loads all in one go because then it's really hard to take it away again. Whereas if you add a little bit at a time, you can keep adding more and it's just much more manageable in terms of getting that shape that you're looking for and replicating that other eye as closely as possible. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to be adding the pupils to our eyes and also a little bit of light and that's gonna really add a lovely cutesy element to our rabbit's head. So I'm just gonna pop him down from his little stand here Okay, the next stage is to take some white cotton wool bats and you don't need very much, just a pinch, probably about this much, which is about two inches in length by about half an inch in width. And I'm just gonna roll it between my fingers. So I'm not gonna make a proper ball shape here because we want this to be quite slack so that it's got lots of movement in it when we felt it. So you want it to get kind of looking like that. I'm gonna do another one now and get it roughly the same size and proportions. A bit less than that, I think. 
and then you just want to hold them in your hands together and just feel them to see if they feel roughly the same. This one feels a bit bigger, so I'm just going to add a little bit more onto this one here, just a touch. And they feel about right now, they look roughly the same size. Now the next thing to do is going to place our pupils onto the brown that we've already added. Now the trick with this is that you don't want the white to butt up against the white of the rabbit's head because it's just going to blend in with it then and you're not going to have that difference between the brown and the white and then the white of the pupil. So we want to keep the white a little bit away from the edge so you've got a little bit of brown coming through here but I'm going to aim to put these around about the top and then kind of looking inwards, so they're kind of at the top inward corner of the eyes that we've added, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna spin him around a second. I'm gonna take this one away, and then I'm just gonna use my medium twisted needle here, just to felt this down into position. And start off with some light stabs. Don't go too heavy handed, because what you'll find is if you stab it too heavy initially, the wool will then just come up onto your needle, which is just really frustrating. So just try and get it stabbed in nice and lightly initially. And I'm working my way around in this kind of circular motion here, so that we can get a nice spherical looking pupil in a moment. We don't want it to be too large. So if you find that it is looking a little bit too splayed out, just use your needle on a slight angle and just push it inwards a little bit as you go along. And also as you felt down the middle, the wall will naturally contract anyway and contract into itself. I'm gonna just keep felting this round in this circular motion always taking your needle out in the same direction that you put it in so you don't break it and I'm just gonna check that a second and make sure that looks all right I'm happy with that so it's starting to kind of take shape there so I'm just going to carry on felting because I just want it to be a little bit smaller and I just want to get a bit more of that brown between the two, the whites of the pupil and then the white of the rabbit's head. And what we can do, you've got, I've got lots of kind of stray bits of wool here where the bats is just quite, they've got some quite thick white bits of hair. So what I'll do in a moment, once I've felt this all down is I'll probably take my embroidery scissors and just snip those excess bits away so we've got a nice clean finish. Just want to get it a bit more rounded now so I'm just going to go in with my needle on an angle and just push, I'm just pushing that white into itself to create more of a, a circular a circular shape so just pushing down with my needle here maneuvering it where I want it to go. Which is a joy of needle felting and that's why it's really you can paint with wool as well. I've never tried painting with wool. I'm I'm more geared towards sculptures, but it does lend itself to that painting side of things because you can manipulate and move the wool as you felt it into whatever it is you're making. It's definitely a very flexible, is that the word? malleable art I don't really know the word will come to me in a moment at the most irrelevant time during the tutorial probably all right so the first eye is in place and you can see it's taken a little bit of felting but he's looking looking nice and round now so I'm just going to grab my embroidery scissors okay so I've got my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to snip away those loose bits of white that I've got coming out from where I've just added the pupil just to neaten it up a bit there we go. So that's the first eye done. So I'll see you in a moment once I've added the second eye. 
Okay, so I've added the pupils to the eyes now. Now this one does look a little bit whiter, but it's just because the sun is kind of shining on an angle on me at the moment, which is why it's illuminating this one and not this one. But they are about the same size. So the next thing to do is to add some light into the eyes. And again, it just gives it a little bit more character to the overall expression of our rabbit. So I'm just gonna take him off his little stand again. And we're gonna be adding some small dots of light my, one of my favourite things to do with my creature characters. And we're going to be adding them sort of around about here, just to kind of give that more lifelike appearance to him. So I'm just going to take my tiny pinch of white gotland wool vats again. You want to go much smaller this time. So I've made a ball about that size here, which is probably about half a centimetre in diameter. And then I've made a second one, which is, mm, they're roughly the same size. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to place this one about here. So it's kind of close-ish to the pupil of the eye, um, but it's not too far away. I don't want it to be too far away. I want it to be kind of close-ish because I think that gives the impression that he's actually looking at something a bit more. So, and that's just, you know, I don't know what the actual proper artistic term for that would be. But, um, but you, you kind of, you, you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna felt that down. And you want to make this about a quarter of the size of the pupil that we've just added. We definitely don't want it being the same size because then people will get really confused as to where to look at his eyes, which one's his pupil. So let's make it quite a bit smaller so there's no doubt as to what's pupil and what's light reflecting and again I'm just doing that circular motion with my medium needle just give it a bit of felt down the side as well and again it's starting to contract into itself and eventually you'll get to the stage where it's looking nice and spherical and it's nice and compacted into the brown of the eye that we've already got in place. There we go, perfect. So that's the first eye done. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the second eye and I will see you in a moment. Okay, so we've now got the whites of his eyes in place. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm gonna take some strips of the white Gotland wool bats. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add them just slightly over the brown we've already added and it's going to be like an eyelid that we're going to be creating and i think it just gives a nice additional dimension to our rabbit's head so i'm just going to spin him round so i've just got a strip here of um very thin white gotland wool bats again so nothing too large and it's probably the, the length doesn't matter too much as long as it goes past the eye you've made but the thickness is about a centimeter and a half and I'm just going to lie it over that top part of the eye. And I don't want it to go over this white too much, but it's just if it does, it's not a big issue. Okay. And then I'm just going to felt this down using my fine double needles. And I'm going to felt it into the white of the head, but also against the brown. And show you like this. So it's melting into it like this. I'll just spin it round and it just creates a bit more shape. It makes it kind of a bit more of a sadder eye, I guess. But I do like the effect it gives. And it just again integrates the eye that we've made in with the rest of the rabbit's head brings everything together in a nice cohesive way so you're aiming for something that looks a little bit like this so i'm actually going to add another strip now just to thicken this up a little bit so same size again same width same length roughly I'm 
and I'm doing like quite light stabbing motions with my needles here, nothing too dramatic. I want it to be in place, but I don't want it to be like really firmly felted down. We want it to just be nice and neat, but not rock solid, just so it blends in nicely with the rest of the head that we've already, we've already created. So it should now look like that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create the impression of the eyelid. So where between the brown and the white, where you've added the, the additional white over the top, you'll have this kind of ridge where you can you still have the brown, um, the sort of the ball of the brown that you've added. So I'm going to take my double needles and I'm going to use them side by side and I'm just going to felt down that crease. And that just kind of really accentuates his eyelid. So just take your time with this. It just gives a lovely, a lovely look to our head. So you've got something that looks like that. So you've got more of a, um, a divide between the eye and then the rest of the head then. And it just gives that lovely eyelid impression. So I'm just gonna spin him round. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side now. So again, I'm gonna take my thin strip of wool and just place that again on an angle over the brown and the white. And felt that down. And I'll see you in a moment when I've completed this eye as well. Right, so we've got our eyelids added. So the next thing we want to do is add our eyebrows. And I'm going to go for this kind of concaved eyebrow because I want him to look a little bit perturbed. I want to go for a perturbed look with this rabbit because let's face it, he didn't get to our wall by any kind of glamorous means, did he? He, you know, he, he was taken out by the huntsman. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to kind of encapsulate those last minutes of, of his time on earth before he got he got shot and and then placed on our wall so what i want to do is give him this this kind of um almost sad looking eyebrows when you're going to go with eyebrows that kind of go in this kind of upside down rainbow look it tends to give more of a for, forlorn or sad look so that's what we're going to do here so i'm just going to remove my stand again so I'm going to start off by using my fine needles just to kind of mark out roughly where I want my eyebrows to go before I really commit myself and start stabbing properly. So I'm just going to spin him around a second. Now actually, where I've kind of blended the wool in from his eyelid, I've got this nice, I don't know if you can see it on camera, this nice area here which almost lends itself to being an eyebrow if I kind of, you know, utilise it and kind of stab that a bit more so I think I might do that so I'm just gonna go from the eyelid and then I'm gonna take this upwards let's see how that looks I like that that looks good okay let's just do the other side as well Trying to get some symmetry here so I'm just checking on the other side to make sure and I'm just stabbing a line with my needles side by side so I don't know if you can see on the camera here but I've got this very faint line this very faint indentation now where I've stabbed my needle into where I want the eyebrows to be so the next stage is to now take my medium needles I'm going to take one of them out I don't know I don't need three for this three is definitely too many I'll take that one out and then I'm going to use these two again side by side and just create a deeper deeper eyebrow so I'm going for a single line of needles initially and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the inner the 
inner part of the brows is going to be slightly heavier and thicker when I create the indentation. So I'm just kind of going to go about half a centimetre in depth and then graduate it down into a finer line. I'm just going to spin this round so I can see what I'm doing a bit more. And it starts to, as you kind of press the wall inwards to create this eyebrow, you also create more shape within the head as well. And it naturally kind of makes certain areas protrude, which, you know, just looks really great and really brings him to life. Now, I was talking about the Jim Henson stuff earlier on. The other person who I think is brilliant is when Banksy does all his animatronic art I think it's really incredible and I remember probably about oh, over 10 well over 10 years ago now he did this surprise pop-up gallery in Bristol he's from Bristol um, I was live well I'm from Bristol I was living in Bristol at the time and um, it was at the Bristol Museum and they had all these absolutely fantastic animatronics animatronic sculptures and one was this rabbit um, which doesn't really look anything like the one we're making now, but it was kind of putting makeup on and it was all a thing about sort of animal testing and testing makeup on animals. But that rabbit really sticks in my mind when I do make these rabbits because it was all white and fluffy, but it was had all this kind of makeup on its face. And it was kind of in a mirror, putting blusher on and things like that. But it was really, it was incredibly clever and they were all obviously moving as well. He also did a really great one of Tweety Pie looking kind of like, about 70 years old, which I thought was really clever. So I do like a bit of fancy. Very clever man. One of my friends reckons he, he knows who he is, but I think he might be telling me a few porky pies. I don't think that that's the case. Okay. But if he is, wow, he's kept, he's keeping a good secret there. He is a vault. <laughs> right. Okay, so I'm just going to go a bit more into the brows, create a bit more depth. And I'm going to probably create a bit more length as well. Okay, so there we go. Our eyebrows are in place. So the next thing we want to do is just add some lines under his eyes here just to create a bit more shaping and a bit more interest again for when we eventually have him on the wall. So I'm just going to go back to my single needles now and this time we're going to stab, I'm just spinning around so I can get this right. So we're just going to stab downwards. So as the eye tear drops downwards that's where we're going to add our line around about here. So I'm just going to spin him round so I can make sure I've got that in the right position. And I'm going to stick with my fine needles for this because it doesn't need to be massively accentuated. It's just a little, little touch of something. There we go. So that's those little lines added there. Now we want to be adding his mouth. Okay, so I've got a long piece of brown merino roving wool here. And this is going to be what we're going to use to create the rabbit's mouth. So what I'm going to do, this is probably about half an inch in thickness. Length again, um, you probably want to make it about 15 centimetres, there or thereabouts, just so you've got a bit of wool to play with. I'm going to place it down the centre between his two little kind of bunny mouth muzzle bits so that it sits there and then I'm just going to take my fine needles and I'm just going to tack that down into place making sure that it's nice and central we don't want it to be wonky and then this bit here this little loose bit I just fold that over and then fold that down into the mouth as well and you really want to make sure that the brown hits the tip of the nose so you've got a nice kind of cohesive finish to the overall head. You haven't got any horrible gaps. 
I'm just going to felt that down into his mouth initially. And we want to get a bit of depth with this. We want it to be relatively deep in terms of the felt because if it's not, it looks very, you probably heard me say this before, but it looks very 2D. We don't want to go for 2D. We want to go for something 3D, which is why we want to really focus on getting this nicely stabbed in and nice and deep. So once you've got this initial part stabbed in and you're kind of taking it to the bottom of where the muzzle is, what we want to do next is take the wool and we are very carefully going to split it in half like that. And then this, you pull it, pull it either side, creates your mouth. So I think we're going to have quite a small mouth here, nothing too big. And you could go downwards to make it a bit sad, but I think we'll do kind of like a heart smile for him. So I'm just going to turn him around so I can see where this needs to go. And then once I've got it into place, you want to create kind of like a W shape. So you want to have this gap coming here. You don't want it to be straight because it really takes away from the, the look of the overall overall sculpture so kind of create this kind of W shape so you've got this gap here and then I'm going to take my me my fine needles apologies again and I'm just going to felt that into position and you can make your mouth however you want it to be you don't have to copy me you could do more of a sad mouth if you want to or you could go super duper happy and give him a massive smile you could have some real fun with it. You could even add some bunny teeth if you wanted to. And get a bit of more white wool, create some teeth and stick those in. That'd be, that'd be quite a fun thing to do. And then I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do, so I've got my mouth in position. Because this is quite fine, I'm then gonna bring these two pieces back into the mouth again, just to kind of double it over and get a bit more thickness. So I'm just gonna go back in. And then the excess, once you've doubled it over, I'm just going to trim that away. If you haven't got this much to double over, don't worry, you can just take another strip and add it in. It's not a problem, but rather than cutting it off, it just makes sense to me to, on needles, to do it this way. Cut that away. And then once it's all in position, we can then start really felting it in. And what I'm doing is I'm do as I'm felting this in, I'm really pushing it upwards to create more of a smile for him. What I'm going to do part of the smile is just not quite the same as the other, so I'm just going to use my needles and I'm just going to press that down a bit, move it down just to get the same shape on the other side. Uh, he's looking. He's looking very rabbity now, which makes me very happy. Okay, so his mouth is in position. Now the next thing to do is we're going to add some little smile dimples for him to create a bit more of a, a lift to his cheeks. So I'm going to go back to my double fine needles and I'm just going to create a little, a little kind of cavern here. Nothing too dramatic just to lift his cheeks a bit and give him that cute little smile dimple. And then the same on the other side. And it just helps the mouth to blend in a bit more as well with the rest of the head. And it's these little tricks that really do take something that looks quite simple to something that looks really professional but they're really simple to do they're not difficult so it's incredibly satisfying when you can add something in for minimal effort but it just really transforms the overall sculpture it certainly makes me happy so i'm going for a diameter of about half a centimeter with these little smile dimples he's got quite a large head and we want to be able to kind of want them to be subtle, but we want to be able, we want to be able to see them at the same time. And once you finish this, you could even make him 
a little crown, a little rabbit crown to go on top of his head. And there you go, there is Smile Dimple. So the last thing to do is add his ears and he is done. Okay, so this is super exciting because we've now reached the last stage of creating our rabbit's head, and that is to add his ears. So the first thing we want to do is think about how long we want his ears to be. So I tend to guesstimate this and go with what looks good in terms of the proportions of the rabbit's head. So I'm gonna move my rabbit head out of the way, and I'm gonna take some white Gotland wool. And I'm gonna take a reasonable amount. So if I look at this piece here, and compare this to the rabbit's head. That kind of size, this kind of size here, looks about right. And this is measuring, for me, nine inches in length and about three to three and a half to four inches in width. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller than this because we're gonna felt it down there with the multi-tool. But you wanna aim for, um, but you want to aim for an ear that looks in proportion with the rest of your rabbit's head. So just be guided by the size of what you already have, as opposed to going with the exact measurements what I'm using at the moment, because it may vary for you. And what looks good on my rabbit might look a bit strange on your rabbit if your head's a bit larger or a bit smaller. So just go with your own kind of artistic thoughts in relation to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to felt down the center of this piece of white Gotland cobble. And I'm just going to keep going and then I'm just going to flip it over as well. Just to compact everything together nicely. And you want this to be really nicely compacted, this piece. So once you've got the middle roughly felted down, what you want to do is you want to fold over about half an inch of the edge felt that in and sort of bring it inwards so you've got a point so you're creating that natural point to the ear i'm just going to move it down a bit so i can felt in this bit as well and then the same on the other side i'm just going to bring in about half an inch and fold it over on itself felt that down too this little bit here this point here i'm just going to fold it over like that, and we can shape it a bit more in a moment. So bringing this all over. Getting a nice neat edge. All the way down to the bottom, and you want to leave this bottom part wispy. I'm just going to felt this down a bit more. Over. We want to spend a bit more time on it this time because it's not a piece that's being added to create shape. It's going to be an actual piece of our sculpture. So we want to work on getting it nice and neat and looking good. And you want it to be reasonably thick so it kind of holds, holds its position when it's attached to our rabbit's head in a second. So you don't want anything too thin. If it's too thin, it's going to be too floppy. Nobody, you know, we do want a floppy ear, but we want it to be sturdy enough that we can kind of almost manipulate it into the position we want it to be in. Okay. So once you've created your ear shape, I'm just going to bring it back to, to this point here and I'm just going to fold this in a bit more. So I'm just going to bring it in by about half a centimetre and felt that down. And then the same on the other side, just because I want to really create more of a point there. There we go. So you've got something that looks like this. So now what we want to do is take some of our flesh-coloured merino wool bats and we're going to place it so that you've got about half an inch either side, but you've got this pink in the middle and then about an inch. It's about an inch away from the top and then about half an inch either side of the ear, away from the sides. 
So just a small amount. And once you've placed it in the middle, and this is probably about three inches in length, I'm just going to felt that down into place. Being sure that you get all of it, all of the wispy ends as well. So really make sure it's nicely felted down. So you haven't got any kind of loose areas. something that eventually looks like this. So I'm going to do the same thing again with the other ear and I'll be back in a second when I've made that one. Okay so I've got my two ears that I've made and if you want to try and replicate the same size they're measuring uh, nine inches in length by three and a half inches in width. So the next thing we need to do is add these onto our rabbit head. So what you want to do is take your first ear and you want to pinch it just above where you've got your kind of wispy unfelted ends. So about an inch just above that, pinch it. And then you wanna start thinking about roughly where it's gonna look good to position your ear. And everybody's got their own preferences. So you may want your ear over here or you may want your ear over here. So it really doesn't matter as long as you're kind of happy with it. So I'm just gonna check mine and just see where I think it looks best. Oh, I like it there, that looks good. I'm going to place it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this. I have to use my chest here so it doesn't skid away. So I'm going to hold this in position, pinching it here, and I've got these ends here that I'm going to felt into the rest of the rabbit head. I'm going to take my fine needles. Be cautious that you've got your wire here as well. We don't want to felt completely over that. So if you can avoid felting that for the time being, and we can sort that out later, that's ideal. But we just want to lock this into position at the moment. Just making sure. I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to cut this so I've got a bit of a gap here for my, my wire. And you just want to anchor it down initially. Just be careful of your fingers at this stage. Okay, and then what we want to do is just felt, where I'm pinching it, we just want to felt either side. And I'm just going to turn it over. Now it's locked into position and make sure that looks good. I'm happy with that. So now it's felted down a little bit, I'm just going to take my needles, move my hands out of the way, and I'm just going to felt down the sides of where I've pinched it here. You want to get this quite tightly felted because we don't want any looseness and we don't want the ear coming away at any point. So really getting in down the sides where you've got this part that's raised. I'm just going to go around the back of it as well. And then once you've got the back felted, you want to flip it over and you want to felt into this area inside the ear and felt it down against the head. So you're kind of felting it down like this. This opens the ear up and again, it's giving you that double security that it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be nicely and strongly felted down. So I'm just going in with my fine needles. We don't want to load, we don't want loads of the the wool to be felted into that, just that kind of probably half an inch, maybe even slightly less, just to get it locked down. And then once you've got it locked down, I'm just going to go back in and I'm just going to push this in slightly, felting it down just to shape it a bit at the bottom give it a bit more natural shaping.
and then just keep checking as well to make sure it's looking it's looking natural and because you're kind of because you've pinched it it helps the ear to stand up on its end but you could also you know you could bend it over as well because the wall has a certain degree of rigidity I can't say the word because the wall has a certain degree of rigidity to it just about got it out um, it makes it quite malleable which is quite nice so you can position it how you want it to look so I'm just going to go back in and felt it a bit more so I felt it down the first ear, so I'm going to felt down the second ear using exactly the same techniques. So I'll be back in a second once I've got everything felted into place. Okay, so our rabbit is now finished and I really hope that you're pleased with him. So off camera, I've obviously added the extra ear. I've also added this little indentation just on the top of his forehead here, just to give him a bit more expression in his face. I've also gone back in again with my needles and just kind of made these lines here under his eyes a bit deeper and also the eyebrows as well again just creating a bit more character so i really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial i certainly have so i hope you're really proud of your rabbit faux rabbit taxidermy heads and i'd be really interested to know how you found the tutorial and how your rabbit has come out so please let me know in the comments below please like this video and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel i'm posting daily at the moment so there's going to be loads more super cute tutorials and needle felting hints and tips to help you out with your needle felting so i will see you tomorrow take care bye